Gaza. Hi, my brother. <laughs> great. Got some awesome love to you, my boy. Um, awesome. I'm so ready to have a great conversation off the back of our awesome chat with Shelly Paxton. Hey. Yeah, for sure, bud. Yes. So we had such a good chat with uh, Shelly Paxton last week. Um, Shelly's a uh, ex uh, Harley Davidson executive like seriously amazing job and she's kind of turned the corner and she's gone and um, started up her own business now and written a book called Solbatical and we just you know discussed her whole life and basically um, just picked up so much amazing stuff from her and and what she's gone through so you know as we do in our superhumanship um, we dissect that chat and we pick our top three and you know the first thing that we uh, we really thought it was super powerful is just all around communication and it's amazing how often this sort of comes up and you know one of the things was around uh, communication and having difficult conversations and I think uh, this is where you know curiosity really sort of shows its face and importance um, because so many of us this in these days and, and always we've always had like our own opinions on things um, but we don't necessarily listen enough and we don't try and understand other people's perspectives. You know, we don't actually intentionally sit down and uh, go to somebody, look, I hear what you're saying, right? Uh, but I actually completely agree with it, disagree with it. Um, <laughs> but can we maybe sit down and just discuss it like in a sort of nice way so that I can kind of understand things from your perspective. We almost just don't do that. We kind of like get our kind of back up and we then argue away, you know, just to prove our points. And it just kind of almost gets nowhere. It doesn't it, Craig? Totally Gareth. And it's, it's, it's really simple because the reason is we have these, we have these egos, don't we? And we, we kind of want to, we want to attach me, our meaning and our filter and our lens to the things that people are saying. And I think that's an important lesson is like everyone has a different journey to get to the points that they're making. And that's part of that curiosity. Like you can, you can use it as a tool and go like, okay, well, like it's interesting that you see it that way, you know, maybe like what, what made you think that, or how did you come to that conclusion? And uh, I think trying to, become humble before conversation, especially if you know it's going to be a tough one, like trying to sit back and go, okay, this is not a time for, for this ego, protective ego you know, thing happening here. This is going to be a time for um, being okay with um, maybe being that really a little bit uncomfortable here and, and saying, um, I am okay with the feeling of being wrong as well, which is, which is tough. You know, I think no one really likes that feeling. But if you kind of go into a conversation knowing that that might be a possibility, being okay with being proven wrong is quite an empowering thing. And I think, I, you know, you and I definitely enjoy that. Like when someone can give you an argument and suddenly you go, oh my goodness, I never thought of it that way. Suddenly the penny drops and it changes your mind. That's actually an epic feeling to have. But if we go in, 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 a, in with a space of uh, that's like nothing is going to sway me. This is not possible. That never happens. You never have these enlightening moments. So it can actually open us up to some, some great opportunities when we, we do get rid of that ego. And off the back of that, like, I think it's a really great way to dis diffuse situations when, there's, when, it, when tensions are high. Um, and so it's, you know, instead of getting caught up in it all, we can kind of just go, let's just slow it down and, uh, you know, and diffuse this first. And sometimes you might have to be the first one to do that, you know, but once you start doing that, it lets the other person's back down a little bit and feel like more comfortable to also do that. And suddenly you, your conversation is back on track. And I think these little tools are, are, are really valuable. And there's, there's a few others that we've definitely used before. And I think one of them is um, avoiding assuming, you know, what other people are thinking, you know, we should always go in with good faith when we're having conversations like, I'm assuming actually that you have best intentions maybe or not assume at all. And I know um, Shelly had a, a story about when she, her book came out, you know, and she was so worried about her grandmother being upset about it. She really was stressing about it, but her grandmother sent her this, this letter, which she now has on her wall of how amazing it was. And it totally, her assumption was totally wrong. Here you go. Yeah, Craig, it's so interesting. Like we, we have these conversations in our heads um, of like situations that haven't even happened yet 
you know, we kind of like spend all this energy and almost create this anxiety for a situation that hasn't even happened. And, um, you know, like having this assumption and making these judgments is really kind of just kind of crazy kind of when you think of it, you know, like you, you just kind of almost wasting your time and in a way you're, you're judging and you're, you're thinking the worst, like you said, and, and we, we, we should really try avoid that. You know, we should really try not try and make up a situation because we don't know what other people are thinking. Their reality is completely different to ours. So, um, so yeah, just another thing to really think about when you, when we talk about communication and conversations, mm-hmm. like, these are not just with other people. They're also about the conversations that we have with ourselves. They are almost just as important. That little mm. kind of monkey in your, in your head, you know, you need to have a good conversation with them and, and just kind of uh, be conscious of what that conversation is as well. And, and just sort of to tie in with that, you know, which is, is the next thing is basically how we compare our insides to other people's outsides, you know? So like, we kind of know what's going on with ourselves. You know, all of us kind of do because we, we are us, we have conversations with ourselves daily. Um, But we don't know what is going on with other people, you know, even though they're also having those exact same internal conversations with themselves. And, but, but what we do uh, is we compare our insides to those people's outsides. So on the outside, everyone looks cool and happy and things are going well and they're going on holiday and they're posting cool photos and all these things, you know, their life is glorious. Um, but meanwhile, on the inside, they're struggling with just the same things as you, but we don't actually talk about these things enough. We don't show up and be vulnerable and sort of go, you know what, this is what I'm thinking and I'm struggling with this and whatnot. So other people don't actually know about it. And one of the things Shelley did with her book is she's like, cool, I'm going to write about everything. I'm going to expose kind of what I was going through, you know, internally so that now you can compare your insides to my insides. And I think that is massively powerful, isn't it, Craig? It's not something that we, we do enough of, and it takes a lot of courage and vulnerability to do these things, doesn't it? Totally, Gareth. And bravery, you know, that's something she also spoke a lot about. And then it really resonates. It's like sometimes bravery comes in so many different forms. And one of them is is exactly what you said now is like just just bearing your insides to the world. And but there's so much freedom that comes through that. It's like that is that is all my do- dirty laundry right there. That there is nothing else. And you can then live your life in this totally congruent way where everything from there is has been said, all the cards are on the table and you're not having to try and figure out what you'd said to this person and that person. And your life just becomes so much easier, you know, and uh, we, we get caught up sometimes in, in white lies and, and coat sugar coating things. And, um, and, and then, you know, sometimes that might feel right, but I think generally speaking, it's uh, it just makes your life in the long term a bit more complicated. And I think what's so important here is, and this is what Shelly really tried to hit home with us is like, spend time on getting clear who you really are like have a moment and sit it sit down and go like what if money wasn't an issue what if if, you know there were no other constraints on us in any way shape or form and what are the things you'd want to do you know day to day and, and really get clear on these things and identify what they are and what your values are on you know on the inside and then once you really sort of hold on to that and are solid within that then it becomes a lot easier to then interface with others because you're not being then influenced by by their values and their thoughts and ideas. You can just hold on to yours nice and closely to your heart and know what they are. So, But to do that, you actually have to do some of the work. And and like you said, journaling is one and there's there's other techniques that people use to, to find what those things are, you know, and some, you know, asking yourself some provocative questions, you know, um, and, and tough questions. And uh, this is where it's really helpful to have people around you as well that can help you with this, like good buddies. And you, know, you and I often do this, Gareth and I often sit down and we'll say like, what is, what's happening in your life? Like really tell me and like, how's that going? And, you know, of late, that's been super helpful for certain things in our, in our lives, you know, and, and you should try that with yourself. And if you've got someone that you can be totally comfortable and vulnerable with, you know, try and try and create a space like that where you can actually ask each other, some provocative questions about your personality and where you're at in your life. And I think, um, you know, it's kind of like 
shining a spotlight on some of the shame that we feel, right, can really transform the way that shame looks, you know, in, in our own minds. And I think that's what Shelley really did well. And I think it's something we can take into our lives and it can make quite a big difference. Hey? Yeah, for sure, Craig. And if we can just like go back like one step quickly, um, you know, I think uh, what you said about asking provocative questions and, and kind of difficult questions right now with what we're going through, you know, like uh, with the coronavirus and people in lockdown and being isolated, um, now is a really important time for us to be uh, more compassionate than ever, right? Um, but it's also a time to ask uh, friends and family, you know, these kind of difficult questions like, are you okay? Like, uh, uh, how are you coping with, you know, with, with things at the moment? Um, do you have enough money? Um, you know, like how, how is your kind of mental health or, or, you know, stress levels or anxiety? Are you managing to cope with these things? Okay. Because now is a time when, when these, these things are really kind of accentuated, mm. you know, and people are kind of really struggling, but, and, and they do kind of need an outlet. And I think it's really important that we, that we do our best to kind of ask these questions uh, in these moments that we're having right now. So it's something just to kind of think about, but, but also mm. just be like, super compassionate and understanding, you know, that, that people are kind of struggling uh, because this is a whole new ball game for people. You know, we're not used to being in these sort of environments and around everybody all the time, every, all the day. So things, things will get quite stressful, but now is that time to also ask those questions, but just in a nice way. Um, mm. So, so I think that's just one thing to kind of like be conscious of it in, in this kind of moment. Um, mm. And, and then Craig, the, the, just kind of moving on the third one, was once again it's kind of like in the headspace kind of thing and we talk about uh, driven people are all often like in their heads you know kind of everything is kind of very in a way analytical it's very uh, black or white uh, black and white um, and they kind of intellectualize everything you know so uh, there's this kind of disconnect between the the sort of body and mind and i think the really important thing is is that we need to remember is we are a whole being you know a human being is all of it together you know and we need to create that connection again and uh understand that when these things are connected and we're doing things with the body and the mind together we're actually much more powerful as an individual uh, for sure but also together and when we can connect those two things and do things uh, more from the body as well and from the guts and from the heart, then it makes things a hell of a lot better for, for all of us to kind of journey, you know, through life, doesn't it, Craig? Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. And, you know, in these times that are so uncertain, you know, our intellectual minds want to grasp and reach for certainty that that's our that's our thinking mind and and the reality is that sometimes that's just not not really the option and so it is important as you say to start embodying more love and compassion and curiosity and these are terms we hear you know embodying that but what, what does it really mean and it's like uh, it has to do exactly with what we were talking about a moment ago it's just like getting the connection back feeling our body like taking the time to you know, when you get that little fl like butterflies in your tummy for some reason, often we just move on and we don't even like take a moment. But what is that telling you? Is it, is it excitement? Is it, is it anger? Is it, are you fearful of something? Um, and I think too often we just kind of, we're in such a distracted world that we don't even really start to listen to these little signs that are actually there all the time. And, and if we can use some techniques to start to embody more and to feel more and to be more present with us as a whole, uh, I think life does become a lot more intuitive um, uh, and a lot more heartfelt. And uh, it's surprising how the sort of grace that you can find in your day when you start to use both, you know, it doesn't mean you have to stop using your head. It just means let, let both have a conversation a little bit, you know, <laughs> and I think that's quite important. And, you know, we, Gareth and I use tools uh, for ourselves, not that we are gurus in any way, shape or form, but we, you know, we, we 
we definitely try and embody that kind of thing more. And we use yoga, for example. And, you know, we were laughing recently because we've both been on this little journey of doing more Kundalini yoga. And if anyone's done that before, it's quite, it's quite different and quite interesting and it's fascinating. But for example, you know, you're shaking your body out and you're trying to like, just get rid of this sort of energy that you have sometimes like built up that are that like blocked in your body a bit and you shake it out and our intellectual minds and our egos think, oh, this is silly or weird or embarrassing. Um, and imagine someone watching me right now. But if you find a glimpse of this moment where you don't care and you lose your, your ego's control over yourself and you just enjoy it and you feel this energy moving, there's a certain feeling that genuinely does come over your body that of like calm and a, and a change in your actual mental state afterwards. And I think that's um, these are things to start exploring, especially now that we're at home and we, we got this opportunity to like try different things and explore more hey, Gareth. Yeah, for sure, Craig. And I mean, there are so many things, you know, and we don't have to do crazy things, you know, as well. Like I think one of the themes that we keep on talking about is, is also keeping things uh, simple, you know. So like you said, you, you can go and do like a cool Kundalini yoga class and you can go find somebody on YouTube and you don't need a big amount of space in your house to do it. Uh, a lot of Kundalini is also done just sitting down. Not, not, you know, not all of it, but like a lot of it can just be uh, like a sitting down class, um, you know, or just uh, any other sort of yoga. Like uh, Marissa started doing, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, <laughs> my voice is croaky. <laughs> Marissa, um, my wife, is, she started doing some face yoga um this week there's a, there's a lady who does like facebook lives and every every morning at 9 a.m she does face yoga and you know what i mean like you just sort of you know you're creating these connections that you you wouldn't have have done before you know or, or just some breathing or go go and do simple things to allow you to sort of connect all these different parts of your body to create these new energies to block existing blockages and um there's a hell of a lot of power when it comes into doing these things. And then you do start sort of morphing as a person, you know, into this more whole being. So, so yeah, so there's a lot there. Um, there's, there's a lot for us to all take in at the moment. Uh, we hope that uh, you guys are managing to keep safe and healthy and supportive in all your groups. And thanks for your time for, for listening to us on, on this podcast. And uh, we just wish you a fantastic rest of the week and we will speak to you all soon. Cheers, guys. Cheers, everybody. Waking at dawn, packing the gear.